Okay, so I'm going to be making some homemade clam chowder. And so since I started doing this um, 50 Gone by 2024, uh, <clears throat> um, I can't eat potatoes anymore. Potatoes is a staple in clam chowder, or at least in the clam chowder that we make. Uh, so I can't use it. So that's okay because I just doubled up on my seafood instead and my meat. So hopefully it's going to be okay. So I thought I'd show you kind of what I do. Okay, normally I would I would peel my potatoes, cut them up in, in squares like little chunks. And I would put water in the pot that's just above the potatoes. I would boil that. You don't strain it. Um, and then you start putting in your ingredients. Okay, so here's the ingredients, some of the ingredients that I have. Okay, so I've got myself some mussels. And these mussels, I got everything I got here is from Save On Foods. So this is the Iceberg Select Blue Mussels. You can usually find these on sale. I found these ones on sale. And then I got some um, raw white prawns. These are the large ones. And these are Western Family. Okay. And then I got some scallops. These ones are frozen still. But <clears throat> these are the Western Family scallops. They're the small ones. Okay, and I, I have, this is the coho that George and I caught this past summer. So I'm going to, it's still frozen, but that's okay. I'm going to slice it all up into chunks. And then over here, I have ham, right? You can buy uh, the... Like it's just a big round piece of ham. It's just a slice. I usually get that, cut it all up. And then I got a whole pack of bacon that I cut up. Okay, now I've got a chopped onion. I've got my 3% or whole milk, seasoning salt, poultry seasoning, which is sage, and some onion powder. Okay, so now I put my oven on about six, about medium heat. Okay, and then we're gonna put our bacon, all of our bacon in and let that cook. Okay. Okay, and then we'll just stir Stir that a little and just cook it until it's done and then strain it. Okay, so I've strained my bacon and now I've just dumped in my onions. Okay, you're going to see in the bottom of the pot, you've got all that on the bottom. That's all the bacon, the cooking bacon. That's good because that's, uh, that's all really good stuff. It's going to flavor your soup really well. So you just put in your onions. And at this point, you can put in your ham as well. Ooh, that's a strong onion. There we go. Then you can turn your stove down a little bit. You don't want to burn your onions. Okay. All right. And while that's cooking, um, I'm just doing my salmon. Now this is still frozen. It's it's just starting to thaw out a little bit. Right, so you cut it, cut up all that, and then it's easier 
to take the skin off when it's a little frozen. I know, don't judge me because I'm cutting towards myself. I'm being very careful and very slow. Here, I'll cut away from myself just so that you're not freaking out. <laughs> it's harder for me to do it this way. So, you just take the skin off. And then you can, um, yeah, I can't do it that way. <laughs> uh, and then you can cut your salmon into chunks. Like most bite-sized pieces. Okay, now don't throw these skins away because you can put them in your plants if you have any plants at home um, or in your garden. It will feed your plants. Your plants will love you. Um, or if you have a puppy that's sitting here like Bailey is. Oops. <laughs> She's patiently waiting. You can give it to, to your puppy. Because they love it, don't they? You love this, don't ya? Ooh, yeah. It's really good for their coat. There you go. So, yeah, pro tip. <laughs> Not that I'm a pro or anything. Sorry. Hope I didn't make you too sick there. Okay, so you're going to just cut these up into bite-sized pieces. Okay. This is just optional. You don't have to, if you don't like fish. Um... You don't have to put fish in. You can just put the shellfish in or whatever. Okay. You continue to do that and I will be back. Okay. I have two cans of baby clams. They're Western family as well. And all you do is you strain them. You don't have to strain them completely because you want some of the clam taste in them. Okay. And then, oops, put it back in your can, which is a hard feat to do. <laughs> or you put them in a bowl, which would probably have been easier. But uh, I always seem to do things the hard way. I, I usually use two cans of these. And then I also have, this is totally optional too, Western Family Wild Crab. Now, this has a little piece of paper on it, so to make sure that you take that out. This is um, very, uh, like almost mashed. So you want to be really careful when you're straining this because if you put it in the strainer, you'll probably lose a lot of the meat. So just kind of um, just pour a little bit out. Okay. If you want to, you can be smart and use the lid, which, you know, is totally the smart way to go. And again, you don't have to completely strain it. Okay. And then we can get ready to put that in the pot. Okay, now that your ham and bacon and onions are cooked down, you can really scrape the bottom just to get that flavor out. Okay. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my butter and I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of butter in there. Okay, let that melt. that's melted, you're going to put in two cups of water. Okay. Now, if you were using potatoes, you would omit that step because you already have your potato water and you're just adding to your potato water. But because I'm not using potatoes, I have to add the water um, just without potatoes. Okay, so let that cook for a few minutes just to get the, the water flavored. Okay, now once you've boiled this for a little bit to get all the flavors going, you can put your sage and your onion powder in. Now, um, we like a lot of sage flavoring. So I'm putting in one tablespoon to start and then we'll see how it is and one tablespoon of onion powder. Okay. Now at this point you're going to turn your your stove down to low because you don't want to curdle your milk when you put it in here. So you're going to just mix it all up and let it simmer. Oh, we forgot to put in our seasoning salt. Okay, I just put in maybe two teaspoons. Okay, once your uh, soup has just been on a simmer, it's not boiling really hardcore or anything, then you can start putting in your milk. I'm putting in two liters of 3% milk. Okay. Let me just mix that up. Oh, it looks good already. We haven't even got the seafood in there yet. Okay, now at this point, you can start putting in your seafood. You put in your salmon first. Okay. Try and do this without, yeah, like that's going to work. <laughs> it's going to splash all over the place here. Okay. This would taste really good with smoked salmon too, if you're lucky enough to have any. Okay, you can put in your scallops. Mine, of course, are still frozen, so we'll just pop those in there. Put in our shrimp. 
Oh, and I'm gonna have to clean the stove. <laughs> just it just got clean today too. <laughs> and we'll put in our mussels. Put in our clams. This is going to be good. Oh, my pot's almost full. There we go. And then don't forget the crab. There we go. Man, I might have to change pots. There we go. Okay. Then we're just going to keep this on low and just let it cook. Don't let this boil because you will curdle your milk. Okay. Okay, I've had this on medium heat for about 15 minutes. Um, it's not cooked yet. You can see that the shrimp is still gray and the salmon is still dark. So you just keep it going. At this point, you can put in your salt. I, I use Himalayan sea salt and you can do this to taste. If you want to put some pepper in there, you can. I can't use pepper because I have acid reflux. So, if you want to put a little more sage in here at this point, you can do that. And just keep mixing it. Doesn't it look great? Oh. Now, the soup, the clam chowder I make is a thin clam chowder, it's not thick and heavy. Um, you're more than welcome, like, if you're doing the keto diet or the Atkins diet or anything like that, you're probably not going to want to put flour or starch in here. <clears throat> but if you're not doing the diet, then you can put a little bit. You just have a little bit of cold water. You put your starch in there, mix it up, and put it in here and mix it really well. And, uh, and keep an eye on it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. And you just let it cook until your, your ingredients are fully cooked. 